back. Uh, let's continue from where we um, ended. So we were talking about OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and um, we were talking about how intrusive this whole thing is. You know how distressing, how critical this whole thing is. Very compulsive. The thoughts rush in, and then it's likened to superstition. And then, as it's likened to superstition, you have to do certain rituals that will alleviate that negative thoughts. That is illogical. It doesn't exist. But that is how you feel because the thoughts, the edges are very powerful and very controlling so you feel that you want to do it and it's going to help you solve some sort of problems but there's nothing there it's very illogical very nonsensical but you have to go through that because it's a condition that you are in and therefore you need some kind of support and help so let's carry on so and in many cases the compulsion is entirely inexplicable simply an urge to complete a ritual triggered by nervousness an urge to complete a ritual triggered by nervousness so this is it so the trigger factors the antecedent is that you are nervous about something that is not there but you think it's there it's like a mirage as I always say so once you think that situation is about to happen or is about to go down you are nervous you become nervous and that nervous or that nervousness acts as a catalyst as a trigger point as a trigger factor and it's going to push you to act in a certain way as we call it ritual to activate that ritual event and after that you think that everything has been sorted out but it's all up in your mind so you are rationing you are calculating you are evaluating certain things that know there's something going to happen so you have to do it this way and that way and after that you are okay there's nothing going to happen to you so you go through that ritual and after that ritual that nervous that symptoms goes down but there's actually nothing happening so you see that is how it works and it's very serious so please if your partner if your child if your husband if your mother if your daughter if if your wife if any of your family member, if your friend, your close relative, a colleague from work is going through that and has been consistent, persistent and laying this for a longer period of time after six months, please tell them to go and have it checked out because it's going to lead to very critical conditions that you wouldn't want anybody, your worst enemy or your worst nightmare to go there, to go through that situation. In a slight minority of cases, sufferers of OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, may only experience obsessions with no overt compulsions. A much smaller number of sufferers experience only compulsions. So you see, some experiences obsession, but they are not compelled to do certain rituals so the obsession will be there maybe keeping your pillows around you all the time when you are sitting at home but you're not going to have that compulsion to place all your pillows in a certain pattern that will tell you that okay after placing that there's no spirit that's going to come and munch you so you see, it comes with superstition, it comes with thoughts, it comes with things that run through the brain that tells that individual that no, you've got to do this this way so that you'll be alleviated or you'll be pardoned from being punished this way and that way. So it's a condition 
that the brain goes through and that is very uncomfortable and it gets when it gets so deadly in terms of escalation to that sort of suicidal areas when your thoughts are pushing and telling you to go and kill yourself that is when it's not funny at all that is why i'm saying that these stages can worsen to a very critical stage so please if you know someone out there or if you need some support or help you can inbox me or tap my details and then I will tell you exactly what to do to get some support or help because you need that. You don't want to go through that and then when it goes to the worst kind of situation, they can't sort of help you because you've um, waited or you've sat down over that for a quite a uh, number of time or a long time and, it's, and it gets worse with time. So please get it checked out. So we have completed the um, OCD and um, we are going to page one we are still on page one or six and I will be sort of deliberating on post-traumatic stress disorder this is one part of the anxiety disorders that is really ravaging the communities ravaging globally because ex-military officers go through it mothers go through it fathers go through it children go through it sons do go through it daughters go through it every individual goes through some kind of PTSD which is post-traumatic stress disorder after a major event that saddles you and that really makes you very very sad or uncomfortable and unforgettable situation that puts you in a very um, bad position and then sometimes you can't even forget it so post-traumatic distress disorder let's let's listen to what the book says post-traumatic stress disorder which is PTSD is an anxiety disorder which results from a traumatic experience so when we talk about traumatic experience, the military officers, when they go to war, they see so many things with their naked eyes. You know, when people are dying, people with injury, you know, all kinds of injuries. Very graphic injuries, graphic scenes that are not even um, worth mentioning on my video. When they go through that, it's a very um, traumatic experience that will be resonating in their brain, that will be playing over and over in their photographic um, computer. This is something that really puts them down all the time. And it acts in a form of OCD because the thoughts are intrusive, they are distressing, they are persistent. And sometimes when care is not taken and support and help is not sort of sought, it gets to the worst stage that the voices will be telling you to go and do something bad. So it's a very serious condition that is not funny at all. So please, those out there, if you are an ex-military officer and you are experiencing this, you've been going through that for quite a number of years or quite a number of months after you coming back or retiring, please have a check out. Book an appointment with your GP. Let them you know, refer you to a psychologist and ultimately a psychiatrist so that they can diagnose and treatment will begin so that you will get yourself out of that situation because don't wait too long don't wait too long for it to go beyond the unnecessary please have it checked out and those mothers out there as well please when you have a traumatic birth or delivery and after that it keeps playing in your mind flashbacks you keep having flashbacks please get it checked out 
because postnatal depression leads to post-traumatic stress disorder and that leads to you know sometimes I just don't want to mention that because that is the the worst case scenario but when it gets to the worst case scenario which is suicidal thoughts then it means you have sat down for quite too long for it to escalate to that um, position or to that level so please get it checked out so let's carry on with what we're doing right away 